welcome to the Tennessee Tribune's fourth community forum on the presidential debates. This is the first time the Ten Tennessee Tribune has hosted a discussion following the debates. And we're getting reactions from African American commu uh, community members who are opinion leaders. So please join us. I am Sandra Long Weaver. I'm the editorial consultant for the Tennessee Tribune. And this evening, uh, we have three panelists who all of us watched the debate last night, the fourth uh, debate and the final presidential debate. So we will go from there. And why don't we, State Representative, mm -hmm. introduce yourself. Well, hello, uh, Sandra, and thanks again for inviting me to be a part of this. And thanks to Tribune also for hosting this historic yes. event. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm Brenda Gilmore, State Representative, uh, District 54 and he, representing the Nashville area. Hi, uh, I too am privileged and happy to participate in this forum. And my name is Sharon Langford and I'm a neighborhood team leader with Obama for America. I'm Joy Sims, I'm a lawyer in Nashville, Tennessee with a practice that emphasizes domestic law and I'm happy to be here with all of you all today. Great. All right, well, we're going to go right to it because I thought last night's debate was pretty on point. They just went right at it. It was on foreign policy and some domestic issues. Did President Obama and candidate Mitt Romney cover the most important topics? And how were their performances? Um, I, I start, I guess. Mm -hmm. I would give President Obama um, an A minus. I thought he did excellent. I thought he did excellent. And I would give Mitt Romney, I think, a C minus. Um, I thought he agreed with almost everything uh, President Obama said, so it was hard to distinguish what the policies, how they would be different if he was elected. And uh, I thought that, as usual, he continued to be dishonest. And I think it. Um, reverted last night and American people could see that it's really a character flaw because he continuously to flip flop or to make one uh, statement and then two or three days later it's completely something different. I think he would do or say almost anything to win the presidential election. Sharon, what do you think? I agree with Brenda wholeheartedly. Uh, I think she hit all the points that I was thinking, especially in reference to Mitt Romney um, being a flip-flopper because, um, I mean, he's been running for president for a long time, they say five or six years, and uh, I've watched him just in the last one year and I've seen how he flip-flops so much and somebody that changes their stand or whatever you want to call it, because I think if he took a stand that maybe he wouldn't flip-flop as much. However, I think that President Obama um, hit a home run. I thought that he covered... On, on what point? Or just in the overall well, I mean, performance? His, his overall performance, mm -hmm. his vision as to where he wants to take the country, and he always makes a statement that we have a choice in this election. Mm -hmm. So, um, and everything that President Obama stands for, I agree with, especially when it comes to foreign policy and domestic issues. Okay. Joy. Well, I thought that the President did a um, good job, a better job than he did in the first debate in terms of being able to articulate his stance on foreign policy. Mm -hmm. I thought that for style points, that he did an excellent job as well in terms of reminding everyone that he is the commander in chief and what his policy has been and in demonstrating that he had the a full knowledge of foreign affairs. Okay. It's uh, interesting you say that he demonstrated he is the commander in chief. I heard a uh, commentator on the Tom Joyner show this morning. Uh, talk about um, how uh, the President Obama was the professor teaching the student, Mitt Romney, how to be presidential. What, mm -hmm. what do you think about that comment? Did you see that or? 
feel differently? I think that uh, we have seen during the almost four years that President Obama has been president, the calm demeanor that he has, mm -hmm. even in the midst of crises. And when you think about this, his presidency, almost everything, the oil spill, we've had droughts, we've had floods, he's in the midst of two wars, mm -hmm. uh, the killing of uh, uh, Osama bin, bin Laden, everything, and he's always re re remained very calm and thoughtful. He approaches this in a very methodical way, and at the same time, he's keeping his eye on the domestic issues here in the United States. So I think that everything about him just alludes that he is truly the commander-in-chief, and we see uh, uh, Governor Romney uh, who is just willing to say anything. We saw what happened in Libya the day after. He just rattles off anything to think about the security of our country or, or of our civilians there in Libya, but trying to score points to, to win this election. Right. Um, one thing that um, Governor Romney keeps trying to hammer is that President Obama apologized to leaders of other countries right yeah. and I was listening to Fox News one day when um, the ex-secretary of state and ex-former chief of staff uh, Colin Powell stated to Sean Hannity that is not true President Obama did not apologize to other countries and for him to be a governor we all know governors do not get foreign policy experience so I would put all my eggs in President Obama's basket because we know he's been he's received foreign policy experience in the last four years. Right. Now Joy when um, kind of following up on that point President Obama last night pointed out when he was candidate Obama yes, yes. and how he uh, reacted to questions about foreign policy. Yes. Do you think that he made a good point there or should he have just left that off the table? No, I thought that he made a very good point when he pointed out the difference between the two, particularly when he emphasized the fact that he went to visit the troops, mm -hmm. which is one thing that uh, Governor Romney has neglected to bring up, you know, he doesn't bring up his, any identification with the military. He never references the military or our troops who are at war. He didn't do it at the Republican convention. Uh, he do, hasn't done it in the debates. Uh, last night was a prime example where he could have uh, brought that in, um, something about the troops, and he didn't do it. Plus, I was glad that the president emphasized that when he did travel uh, as a candidate, he did not take fundraisers with him. He did not try to make political hay out of his visits to other countries as Romney did, particularly in his visit to Israel. So I thought that was uh, an opportunity. Romney cracked the door open and the president launched on it. So I was glad that he to see him do it. And I was very pleased also that President um, Obama was very clear about his support for Israel. Yes. yes. Because I think uh, Governor Romney has tried to use that as a wedge mm -hmm. to uh, turn the Jewish people against the president. But he was very clear that he would stand if should, and you know, we certainly hope that that does not occur, right. but should um, Israel be attacked, that he and this country would stand with Israel. Yeah, yes. I thought he made a very clear point on that. I'm mm -hmm. sorry, Sharon. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, mm -hmm. it was, yeah. um, and and I think it was the first time that the president really laid it out mm -hmm. as clear as he could have. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, what about Syria? Mm -hmm. In the past, I've heard, and perhaps maybe I'm wrong, maybe you'll correct me, but I've heard Mitt Romney uh, say that we should go into Syria, we should be doing war in Syria. Mm -hmm. And last night he seemed to back away and say, I agree with the president's policies. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What did, did you all hear the same thing? Or Yes. yes. I, as, as a matter of fact, he literally repeated everything that President Obama said. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So well, that means, that tells me he has no new policy, no new strategy. He doesn't have any 
new ideas on how to handle Syria or foreign policy for that matter? Well, what it showed me was the evolution and we've seen of Romney as a candidate mm -hmm. and that he's, he originally started out trying to stake his claim as being ultra-conservative to get the ultra-conservative backing. But now we see that he's come further and further to the center point. Mm -hmm. And we all know that history has shown in recent uh, years that anyone who runs for president eventually has to come to that center point in order to get backing. So we've seen Romney come full circle on that. But I was glad that the president again took the opportunity to show that he makes decisions not based on what the polls show or what the popular uh, opinion is, that he will make tough decisions regardless of what the polls show. I don't know whether people who were undecided picked that up or not, but I think the president did use that as an opportunity to show this is the difference between you and I. Right. I made a decision to go in for Osama bin Laden when other people did not think that was the popular thing to do. Mm -hmm. So I think that um, that was something, but it's just been interesting to see the development and evolution of Romney as a candidate. And I'm wondering what do his ultra-conservative backers think today? He backpedaled so far and got so close to the president's position on so many issues regarding foreign policy I, last night. I think his handlers probably told him that they wanted him to appear presidential yes. and not to be they confrontational. Mm -hmm. And so therefore he agreed with almost everything that the president said. And I believe that his supporters and his base are probably not pleased with that but um, their motto is probably anybody but Obama, so right. therefore yes. that they're willing to yes. settle with this, this candidate. Yeah, this yes. moderate uh, candidate who before said he was severely uh, conservative. So mm -hmm. now we've seen him move completely to not the center, but all the way to the left. So. <laughs> Which is quite interesting mm -hmm. because uh, it's hard to identify what his positions mm -hmm. are on almost anything. Um, uh, just before um, we started talking, we, uh, we mentioned that the Tennessean has already uh, endorsed Mitt Romney. And it's interesting, that means that they endorsed him on Sunday, probably. So how do, how do you think, that does that tie into anything? Does mm -hmm. it help change people's opinions with what they saw uh, last night? I think the Tennessean endorsed him last Thursday, last Thursday, and I was very disappointed in the Tennessean because uh, the Tennessean made a case for the president mm -hmm. and talking about his strong points and what he's been able and him dealing with the hand that uh, that was dealt to him, and then it was almost like a surprise ending to a story that you were expecting something totally different. Then came the uh, endorsement of Romney. So I think a lot of Tennesseans, not, uh, not just uh, as they refer to him as liberals, mm -hmm. but I think a lot of Tennesseans mm -hmm. will see that, that there wasn't very much honesty and it was almost hypocritical uh, what those editors did and that they're disappointed in that endorsement. Okay. Anybody else? I think maybe the Tennessean was um, just out about continuing to make money. Okay. And maybe if they did endorse President Obama, they might lose money. Although they did endorse President Obama in 2008. Mm -hmm. But neither endorsement was on the front page. And I don't understand that. It's almost as if they are creeping along or trying to just ease it into the publication. I don't think it's probably unusual that it's yeah. not on the front page because they usually um, include endorsements on the editorial pages. Right. So, oh, okay. That's usually where it is on the editorial page. Mm -hmm. Well, that's why I think it's so important that in our community that we look for all different types of sources to get our news and information from. That's why I'm so glad that the Tennessee Tribune is sponsoring this forum. And that's where I get a lot of my information from is the Tennessee Tribune, as opposed to relying sometimes on other pieces of media who come from a certain point of view because of whom they're owned by. And now that we've seen sort of the, the, the reveal as to 
all the fat pockets who are supporting Romney and just how viciously they've come out against Obama. I'm, I'm not surprised. I wouldn't be surprised at a lot of things that I see from here on, but it's good that we have our own media to rely on in Nashville as well as other media like the Tennessean. Now, there have been three presidential debates. Um, so what's the cumulative effect of those three debates? Does it change any voter's mind? Does it, do you know more about where the candidates stand? Was it worth doing three debates? Would you like to see a fourth debate? Mm -hmm. I thought all, of the deb all the debates were very good. The first debate, I think that President probably lost a little bit of ground uh, not because of content, just simply because of style. Mm -hmm. I think he was trying to be a gentleman mm -hmm. and perhaps was too polite and somehow um, in our misplaced values, I think in America sometimes we view politeness and being a gentleman as a sign of not being assertive or being strong. However, I think that we can see from his track record that he is very, very strong leader and saw the contradictions last night when Governor Romney said we couldn't kill uh, our way out of uh, our foreign policy mm -hmm. and then he would flip-flop again <laughs> and says, you know, he would have handled something, uh, he would apologize uh -huh. to these different countries mm -hmm. that, you know, he would be stronger and try to uh, paint a picture of our president as being, being a very weak leader, mm -hmm. but the, the facts just do not bear it out. Mm -hmm. Thank you.